still Saturday. We're still here. Now we're going to work on X intercepts. So we just went over standard form and we just went over vertex form. And the third form, much like linear equations, how we had three forms, our third form is going to be X intercepts. So X intercepts. Um, <clears throat> and much like standard and vertex forms, we are going to have two calculated and we're going to get three freebies. So uh, when we see this, y equals the quantity of x plus 4, x plus 2, um, that should remind us of something. So y equals x plus 4, x plus 2. If we simplify that out, if we do FOIL first, outer, inner, last, you get x squared plus 6x plus 8. So this would be in the standard form. Can I move that? Yes. Can I move that? Yes. So this is standard form. And this is x-intercept <clears throat> form. And the reason why it's an x-intercept form is because we know that x-intercept y equals 0. And if we remember when we solved these quadratic equations earlier, we had a 0 here. And we had x plus 4, x plus 2, because notice we substituted. The only difference between this equation on the top is that this has a y, this has a 0, because we substituted 0 in for y because we're looking for the x-intercept. So when we use this, when we did this earlier in the year, we were using the zero property of multiplication. And the zero property of multiplication says, hey, if you have two things multiplying that equals zero, well, one of them must be zero. They both can be zero, but one of them at least must be zero. That's the only way you can get zero through a product of two numbers. So the way we do this is we go, okay, what value for x in x plus 4 would make it zero? So we solve for that and we get, oh, when x is negative 4, that would make this box, that first box, equal to zero. And then we do the same questioning well, what value for x would make this box, the second box? And so we set it equal to 0, and we find that when x is negative 2, that other box, that second box, would be equal to 0. So my x-intercepts are going to be negative 4 and negative 2. So the first thing we're always going to do is find the x-intercepts. And in this case, you're going to look at the first box. You're going to look at that first box. What makes that box 0 would be positive 4. And you look at the second box, and you go, what's going to make that 0? And you say negative 2. Oh, negative 4 and negative 2. Mr. Rack didn't even write it. So my x-intercepts are negative 4 and negative 2. Because remember, the parabola, the shape of the parabola, looks like this. And uh, we know, here's another thing that we can discuss, is the different types of intersections that you can get when you have a parabola on a coordinate plane. It can look like this. It can look like this. And then it, the third one is it can look like this. So the things we want to point out here is we have two x-intercepts right here. So this intersection, this parabola has two x-intercepts and one y-intercept. So that's the y... Mm, let's go back, get a proper pen. This would be a y-intercept and we get two x-intercepts. So we get two x-intercepts, one, two. In this intersection, we have 
one y-intercept. But this time we only have one x-intercept because it bounces, the parabola bounces off the x-axis. So that's very interesting, very unique. And we'll do some examples today. So here's my y-intercept. And here is my one x-intercept. And then the last one is, ooh, let me redo that. That's a bad. The other one is this. I don't know if I drew that in the other, during class. So this has a y-intercept, but it does not cross the x-axis. So it has one y-intercept, but no x-intercept. And one of those situations that we had when we were factoring, when we, when we were solving, was remember when we did a times c and we had no solution? So one of those situations when we have no solution is the fact that this parabola doesn't cross the x-axis. That's one of the reasons why we get no solution. So that's, keep that in mind. So this should be relatively easy, finding the x-intercept. It is fairly straightforward. Um, the next part is a little more interesting. We're going to find the axis of symmetry. And we do that by looking at our x-intercept. You take the distance. Oh, it's dying on me. Yeah, there goes the pen. I got too funky. I got too creative, using too many colors, too many. So we're going to take the distance, the distance between the two x-intercepts. In this case, the distance is two spaces. The distance equals two. One, two, right? This space between, between these two points is two. And then we're going to divide that distance by two. Not by the fact that it's two, but we're going to take half of that distance. That's why we divide it by two. Divide distance by a half. Take half of it. Don't divide the distance by half. We're dividing the distance by two or take half. That's maybe confused you completely. So we take two, we divide by two, and that is one. So we're going to use this and we're going to move one in between. We're going to move one to the right and one to the left. And as we see, there is our axis of symmetry. I probably didn't do a very good job of describing that or explaining it. But you'll see, we'll keep doing it on these other examples, and hopefully you'll get that. All right, now that we have the axis of symmetry, the axis of symmetry, axis of symmetry is x equals negative 3, and we're going to find the vertex. We're going to calculate that. Find the vertex by plugging in x equals negative 3. So we have y equals x plus 4 times the quantity x plus 2. And we plug that value in. So we get negative 3 plus 4, negative 3 plus 2. That gives me 1 times negative 1, or y equals negative 1. So when I plugged in negative 3, I got negative 1. Negative 3, negative 1. There's the bottom. Let's start labeling these. That is negative 4, 0. Make sure your x and y coordinates are correct. This is negative 2, 0. This is negative 3, negative 1. And now let's find the y-intercept. So um, we found the vertex. This is the vertex. I think we're on step 4. Step four is find the y-intercept. This time we're going to plug zero in for x. y equals zero plus four, zero plus two, which gives me four times two, which is eight. So my 
y intercept is 0, 8, plugged in 0 for x, got 8 for y, 0, 8, let's mirror it, 1, 2, 3 away, 1, 2, 3 away, this gives me negative, oh, yeah, that gives me negative 6, 8, slow down, when, when it starts getting confusing, you start moving too fast, you tend to make mistakes. So take your time, slow down, relook at it, make sure that what you're writing is correct, and ensure, double check if you have to. All right, four was fine. This is the y-intercept, and then I mirrored it. Okay, cool. Now, next example. So here we have it, same style. First thing is find the x-intercepts. What makes this 0 is a negative 6. What makes this 0 is a negative 2. Those are my x-intercepts. Negative 6, negative 2. Next, I'm going to find the axis of symmetry. What's the distance between these? 1, 2, 3, 4. The distance equals 4, so I do 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So my axis of symmetry is x equals, uh, oh, is 2. So, uh, hold on, oh, Mr. Mac, maybe. So I'm going 2 in between. My axis of symmetry is actually x equals negative 4. Let me see if I made that mistake over there. Let's go back to 1. No, that was good. Axis of symmetry, I wrote that correctly. Okay. So the mistake I was going to make here was a silly mistake. All right. So my axis of symmetry, my distance is 2 in and 2 in. That gets me my axis of symmetry. Now I need to find my vertex by plugging in x equals negative 4 into the equation. So we got y equals negative 4 plus 6 and we have negative 4 plus 2. So y equals 2 times negative 2, and that gives me negative 4. So my vertex is going to be negative 4, negative 4. Really? For reals? Negative 4, negative 4. Okay. Negative 4, negative 4. This is negative 6, 0. This is negative 2, 0. Pretty fast. We already have three points. Let's calculate the y-intercept by plugging in 0 for x. And we get y equals 0 plus 6, 0 plus 2. y equals 6 times 2. y equals 12. We're going to go off the grid. Eight, 9, 10, 11. Oh, let's make it there. That's my y-intercept. That's going to be 0 for x, 12 for y. It is 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 away. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 away, but at this level. So that will take me to negative 8 for my x and 12 for my y. And I'm going to connect it. Ooh, that is super steep and I need arrows. Good. All right. We're getting it. This is fun. Now we're going to switch it up, start seeing a little bit of difference here. So if we see the difference, we're going to say one, our x intercepts are now going to be three and negative two because a positive three makes that zero a negative two makes that one zero. So 3 and negative 2, negative 2 and 3. My axis of symmetry, my distance this time is 5. Ooh. And I'm going to divide it by 2, which is 2 and a half. So I have to go in 2 and a half. 1, 2 and a half, in 1, 2 and a half. That's going to take me right to 1 half. 
So my axis of symmetry, the equation is x equals one half. That's the location of it. Okay, and that's important because that's the value I'm going to plug in to find the vertex. So we have y equals one half minus three, one half plus two. So that gives me negative two and a half. This gives me two and one half. I'm not going to multiply it in that fashion. I'm going to multiply it as a mixed number or as an improper fraction, not as a mixed number. And I get y equals negative 25 fourths. Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. And now I'm going to convert it back to a mixed number so I have a location. So my location is one half, negative six and a quarter. Yes, I know I made a mistake in the notes. In red class, I think I did six and a half. So one half, negative six and a quarter takes you down here. So I'm going to label it one half, negative six and one fourth. Uh, that is three zero. This is negative two zero. And now I can find my y-intercept. And look, I'm going to mandate that you do the y-intercept uh, because we need to have common points. And let's all agree. So the y-intercept is going to be 0, y equals 0, what is that? Minus 3, 0 plus 2. We get negative 3 times 2, which is negative 6. So my y-intercept is 0, negative 6. 0, negative 6 is right there. And let's move this vertex point. That was 1 half, negative 6 and a quarter. And the mirror point is going to be a half away. So that's going to be 1 comma negative 6. So those are pretty tight and jumbled around. I have to be able to see those coordinates. Those are so important. You have to label them next to the points, not just on the paper on the side. I'm going to need to see those. All right. Oh, look at this. So we still have two boxes. My boxes, this is a box times this box. So. What makes this box zero? Well, what makes that box zero is zero. So my x-intercept, one of them is zero. And then what makes the other box zero is four. So those are my intercepts, my x-intercepts. Now the distance between is four divided by two. So it's two. So I go two in takes me here. That's my axis of symmetry is x equals 2. I'm going to find my vertex by plugging in that 2. y equals 2 times 2 minus 4. y equals 2 times negative 2. y equals negative 4. So my vertex, I plugged in 2 and I got negative 4 out. 2, negative 4. Let's start labeling things. 0, 0. Oh, we see that. I don't know if we noticed that. 4, 0. And this is 2, negative 4. Uh, what we should have noticed is that my, verte uh, my left x-intercept is also my y-intercept. Wow, that's funky. So I do not... Uh, I've already found my x or my y intercept, so I need to find a fourth point. Um, I'm going to plug in one. Uh, y intercept is also one of the x intercepts. So I have to find a fourth point. I'm going to pick x equals 1. I don't think I've used 1 yet. 0, 2, and 4. 
and my equation is going to be y equals 1 times the quantity 1 minus 4, y equals 1 times negative 3, y equals negative 3. So my next point is 1 negative 3, 1 negative 3, and I mirror it, it's 1 away. That's going to make it 3 negative 3. I have five points. We're good here. Mm. So, this is how, well, let's not do that. Let's just do it kind of close. Let's think of this. This is quantity squared. So, we have two of these. Make sense? Good. I hope it does. So, your x-intercept is going to be the same. So, you, this is that situation where you only have one x-intercept. The x-intercept is going to be 4. So when you have one x-intercept, let's go back to all these drawings. Remember, uh, here's your vertex. We can even put the vertex in here. Um, let's do this. So the vertex is going to be here, and the axis of symmetry will be along that vertex. Vertex is going to be here, axis of symmetry. But in this one, when there's only one x, intercept, your vertex and your x-intercept are going to be the same. So your x-intercept is going to lie on your vertex. That's this one. So this point is also my vertex. So that is 4 comma 0. Um, so my vertex and my axis of symmetry. Oh, look at all these. So it shares all that. So my vertex, my vertex is also 4, 0. My axis of symmetry, oh, no, sorry. We do 2 as axis of symmetry. But axis of symmetry is going to be x equals 4. My vertex is also... My x-intercept, so my vertex is 4, 0, so we got a lot of duplicating. So let's move to y-intercept. That's nice. That's not one of those points, so we're going to plug in 0. We can plug it into either one. I'm going to use uh, the original equation. We get negative 4 squared, which is 16. Oh. 0, 16, okay. So that's way, way up here. That's 0, 16 is my y-intercept. That is 4 away to the axis. So I'm going to go 4 in this direction, which takes me to 8, 16. And now, that probably isn't even shaped. That's probably not even close. There we go. Maybe. Oh, no, that's 8. That's good. That was okay. Um, and now let's find a, so we found my y-intercept, 5 is mirror, mirror y-intercept, we only have 3, so 6 is find a fourth point. Um, we'll do 1, so x equals 1, so we get y equals 1 minus 4 quantity squared, which is negative 3 squared, which equals 9. So we get 1, 9. That's not much better, but at least it's relatively close. That's 1, 9. That's 3 away. 1, 2, 3 is going to be here, and that is 7, 9. So that's what the graph looks like. Oh, last one. So, this is still my A. That coefficient still determines upwards or downwards. So, we know that my vertex is going to be upside down. Uh, one half tells me that it's going to be a little bit more of a bubble on the bottom. It's going to be very rounded, shallow. But these are still my x-intercepts. This a value doesn't affect my x-intercepts. So my x-intercepts 
are going to be 4 and 2, 4 and 2. The distance, my axis of symmetry, my distance is 2, divide by 2 is 1. So my axis of symmetry is going to be x equals 3 because it's going to be right there. And knowing that my axis of symmetry is 3, I know that my vertex, I'm going to plug in that 3 into that equation. y equals negative 1 half, 3 minus 4, 3 minus 2, negative 1 half, we have negative 1, we have 1, y equals negative 1 half times negative 1, which equals one half. So the point is three, one half. Not fun. Three, one half. We remember, oh, let's write our coordinates two, zero, four, zero. And we're going to write it above it because we know my shape of my parabola is upside down. That is three, one half. And now let's find the y intercept. Um, what are we on? Four, three. Four y intercept x equals zero. We get y equals negative one half times the quantity x um, minus four zero minus two minus two y equals negative one half negative four times negative two y equals negative one half times eight, y equals negative four. So we got zero, negative four is my y-intercept. There, zero, negative four, one, two, three, one, two, three, takes me there, and that's six, negative four. I think that was it. Yes! All right, x-intercept, you saw a lot of examples there. But each time we found five points and hopefully you're grasping and you've mastered the three ways of graphing parabolas. Standard, vertex, and x-intercept. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend.